All right, hello to my Facebook audience, and hopefully Periscope is going to pop up in a minute. There you are. Hello to my Periscope audience. God bless you. This is Prophet David Taylor coming to you at our regular time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, it keeps dropping. Um, sorry about that. Uh, I'll have to see what I can do. But anyway, uh, yeah, so come to give you the live prophetic word for this week. So as always, I come out and I ask the Lord, what does he want me to release to the body of Christ? And this week... What the Lord gave me was Matthew 6.33. <clears throat> it's a very familiar scripture, but there are some things we want to explore in Matthew 6.33. Matthew 6.33, reading out of the King James Bible, says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now let's look at that in the NIV version. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Okay? So, what the Holy Spirit showed me, He wanted me to relay out of that, is this. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God. Stop. If we're Christians, that means that whatever kind of moves we're making in our lives, whatever kind of choices we're making, we're supposed to put God and His kingdom first. We're supposed to seek His face. We're supposed to ask him what his will is in the situation. And this is what you've heard me say several times, that you cannot just accept Jesus as Savior and be successful. You have to accept him as Lord as well. And that's what many times I believe is, is not taught as strongly in our backgrounds these days, that you cannot accept Jesus just as Savior. Okay, uh, Romans 8.1 is where you accept him as suffering servant where he became our condemnation. And Romans 5, 1 is where you accept him as Savior. He is our justification. But Romans 12, 1 and 2 is where you accept him as Lord, where you surrender the lordship rights to your life, where you sur surrender control of your life to him and you do what he tells you to do. You cannot be successful as a Christian if you remain your own Lord. Let me say that one more time. You cannot be successful as a Christian if you remain your own Lord. You cannot just accept Jesus as Savior. You have to accept him as Lord too. You have to lay down the Lordship rights to your life and begin to learn how to hear the voice of God and do what the Lord's telling you to do. That's how you achieve success in this life as a Christian. So Matthew 6.33 says, but seek first the kingdom of God. So that means as believers, when we're trying to accomplish something, when we have questions, when we're setting goals, like this is still January, so we're still looking at goals for the new year, you're supposed to seek God first. Seek his face. Ask him, what is your will in this situation? Is this what you want from me? Is this the right time? Is this the right season? I'll give an example. I had two books ready to release uh, going on three years ago now, and I thought to release this one particular book. And the Lord said, no, don't release that one, release this one. So I did what the Lord said do. I can't imagine what the last two years of my life would have been like if I had released the wrong book. And the book that I just released that I have out now needed some editing and some rewrites, and I'm very much uh, more satisfied with the book I released this time because I listened to what the Lord said. And I did what the Lord said do. Do you see what I mean? So you have to seek God's face. You have to seek God first before you make decisions and ask him, what is your will in this situation? And be willing to do what the Lord tells you to do. Okay? Because it's not going to be what you think. And it's not going to be according to sight. It's not going to be according to these. It's going to be according to what God says. So seek first the kingdom of God. But then there's this phrase that I've discovered gets glossed over a lot, and it says, and his righteousness. Stop. Let me ask you a question. Why would the Lord say, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Okay, because this is Jesus saying this. This is a direct quote from the Lord. Why would the Lord say that? I'll tell you why. Because there's God's way of doing things, and there's man's way of doing things. And you can be a Christian, you can be born again, you can be saved, 
and still be doing things man's way. That is why you're not a man. Uh, you said order. That's right. And amen. That's right. So many Christ That's why so many Christians. You don't have the promises of God in your hand in your life. They're not in your life, or you can see them because you're not doing it God's way. You can't just jump up and do something and expect it to be successful as a Christian. You're doing it man's way. You're doing what you think. You have to seek His righteousness. And what that means is his way of doing things. So, again, let me explain something to you. There is your positional righteousness, the position you have with God. That is being born again, being a part of the kingdom, being a part of his family, right standing before God. Once you get saved, you are saved. That's because Jesus Christ paid the, the price and the cost for your sin with his blood and his sacrifice and his death on the cross. So once you become born again, Amen. You want the blessing, but you're not submissive to authority. Amen. Once you become born again, you are a child of God. So think of it like being the child of your parents. Once your father's seed uh, 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 leaves his body, once your father releases his seed and it leaves his body and he impregnates your mom, then that fertilized egg gestate is, gestates inside your mom for nine months and then your mother pushes you out. Okay. Your parents can never not be your parents. Okay, so you have a position in that family because you were born into it. That's what it's like when you get saved, but that's your positional righteousness. But your conditional righteousness is the way you live your life. It's your daily fellowship with God or not. It's like you can be estranged from your parents, like that's your dad or that's your mom, but you're not close to them. That's your dad and that's your mom, but you don't really talk to them that much. That's your dad and that's your mom, but you really don't want to hear anything they have to say. Can you see it now? That's the condition of your relationship with your parents. Your position never changes because once your father's seed leaves his body and impregnates your mother, those are your parents. That can never not be true. That's your position. The same thing happens when you get saved. You are a child of God. You are a Christian. You are born again. You are part of the family. That can never not be true. That's your position. But your condition is whether or not you have a walk with God every day. And your conditional righteousness is how you live your life. And it's entirely possible to be a Christian with right standing with God, position, but not be living the way God wants you to live, condition. That's entirely possible. And many of us saints do it. So that's why the Lord said you have to seek his righteousness. You have to seek his way of doing it. You have to ask the Lord, what is right in your eyes concerning this subject? So let me give you some practical examples, because I remember when I was little, I would always hear a lot of platitudes in church, but they didn't tell me how. So I always promised myself, <clears throat> excuse me, that if I ever got called into ministry, I was going to give you practical, real life examples of how to do what the Bible says and what exactly the Bible is talking about. So let me give you a practical example. Uh, one of the most common examples is people that are seeking to be married. And people say, I can't find a husband or I can't find a wife. or ain't no more good men out there. Okay. If you can't find a spouse, it's because you aren't a spouse. If you want to get married, you have to be somebody that's worth marrying. You have to sow into marriage. You cannot attract a husband if you're not a wife. If you're not a wife, you're just some woman that wants to get married. And what you're going to attract is some dude that will marry you, not a husband. He might be your legal husband, but he won't actually know how to be a husband because you don't know how to be a wife. Because you reap what you sow. That is the righteousness of God. As you sow, so you reap. That's the righteousness of God. That's God's way of doing things. And a whole lot of people, both saints and sinners, think they can sow to the flesh, think they can sow sinful lifestyles, think they can sow unto death and reap life instead and reap God's blessing. They think they can reap God's blessing their way. And Bishop Jake said a couple weeks ago, you cannot reap God's blessing your way. If you want God's blessing, 
You have to do it God's way. That's what and his righteousness means. Let me give you another example. Some Christians think that if they give and give and give and give and give, that they're going to force God's hand to give them a whole bunch of money in return. But the actual truth is, is that when you sow money into God's kingdom, you break open the heavens and God opens the windows. But you have to ask God, how do I receive my harvest? Because a whole lot of people are expecting manna. You expect it to fall out the sky. Now, if you're at a place in your relationship with God where you're still on manna, you know, because you hear a whole lot of Christians give this testimony, and I just put this money in church on Sunday, and then somebody just walked up to me and gave me, okay, well, that's great, but that's not going to happen that way for everybody. You have to ask God, how do you want me to get this harvest? And many times the answer is you have to become better at what you do. You have to become worth more to the marketplace. That's how you're going to get your harvest. And a whole lot of people don't, don't see that because you have not asked God, how am I going to get my return for this money that I'm sowing? Do you see it? That's seeking his righteousness, the right way of doing things in the eye of God, the way heaven does things. Okay, that's why the Lord said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Okay, and then it says that all these things will be added or shall or will be given unto you. Uh, let's look up that phrase, will be added. In the Greek, that word is prostithemi. Prostithemi, the, the phrase shall be given, will be added. That Greek word is prostithemi. And what that means is properly put together for a purpose to gather or add up, stressing the objective of the increasing, reaching the goal for doing it. So in other words, the increase that you want, the, the additives that you want, the things that you want added to your life. You have to put God first, seek his face, and seek his way of doing it. Then you get the blessing. That's how you get the blessing that you seek. Okay? So I just want to encourage you to put these principles into practice. That before you start making decisions, especially for the new year, that you are seeking God's face that you're putting his kingdom first, but you're also seeking his way of doing it, then all the things that you seek are going to be added unto you. That's why so many Christians don't have what they're looking for, because they've never asked God, how do you want me to go about reaping this harvest? Okay? All right, great. Well, that's our prophetic word for today. I'm going to seal that with a prayer. Uh, okay, uh, there's a prophetic word the Holy Spirit wants me to release, and then we'll seal it with prayer. Oh, my people, you are my dearly beloved, and this year I move swiftly. This year I move uh, with swiftness, with precision. Behold, I move in quarters. So what I do in July, I'm not going to be doing in January. So, my people, it is a time of the wise virgins and the foolish virgins. If you are foolish, you are not spirit-filled, and you are not in step with what I'm doing. But if you are wise, you are spirit-filled, and you are daily at my feet, listening to my voice, seeking my face and my righteousness. For when I move, I will move swiftly. I'm going to shut the door behind me. And what I'm doing in July is not what I'm doing now. So be wise. Stay spirit-filled. Hear my voice. Stay in step with me so that you can move forward and receive every blessing. For those that do not listen, the door is going to be shut and they're going to be left out. But those that hear and obey, I'm going to move forward and move higher and higher, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Well, I'm blessed by that word. I know that I want to get all my work done that the Lord has for me in the first quarter of 2018, January, February, March. So then when April comes, the Lord can give me what he has in mind for April. So I'm not trying to do January's work in April. I'm doing January's work now. Okay? All righty. So let's close that with a prayer. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, thanking you so much for your prophetic word, thanking you, O oh God, that we have to stay in step with your word, that we have to obey, that we have to move with you in quarters, that we have to stay spirit-filled, that we have to seek your face and your kingdom and your righteousness to receive the blessing. And we thank you for that revelation and that understanding, O oh God, and we will do that, O oh God. We will seek your face and seek your direction so that we might be blessed in all things. 
that we might uh, receive all the things you have for us in the kingdom and no longer do things our way or man's way, but seek your face that we might do it God's way, heaven's way, the kingdom of God way, and we might receive everything that you have for us in this life. We thank you for it. We believe you for it. We establish this prayer by the blood of Jesus that has paid the price for all sin. We seal this prayer in the name of Jesus that is the name above every name. And on my authority as a prophet of God in the kingdom of earth, I release the anointing for obedience. I release the anointing for hearing. I release the anointing for staying in step with Christ. I release the anointing for moving with God and receiving everything from the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember now, uh, I release music on my prophet David Taylor and Shades of the Cross page, so you'll find my new music there. And then I do a live broadcast on that page on the first Sunday of every month. And then I'm on this page, Prophet David Taylor, every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for your uh, weekly live prophetic word as well as on Periscope. Okay? i got some more exciting stuff coming up, some stuff I can't wait to tell you, but I'll tell you about that when it's ready. Okay? God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a blessed week. I hope that you seek God in all that you do. I hope you put his kingdom first. And I hope that every good and perfect gift that the Father wants to give you is yours this year. In Jesus' name. And God bless.